welcome to this particular module and if you remember in the last module what we have discussed we have discussed how we can understand the cell and tissue cell, uh, morphology in particular we were interested in cell morphology uh, to delineate between a normal and cancer uh, uh, you know cells. <coughs> so, what is the role of that? The role of uh, understanding the cell morphology is to uh, help the help in rapid screening uh, of the uh, patients. Now, when we are talking about patients what kind of disease we are talking about? We are talking about oral cancer. So, in oral cancer if we can develop a system that can rapidly uh, screen the patient uh, then it will be useful. So, uh, the current way of, uh, do, of performing this procedure is that the cells are taken from the oral cavity, they are kept in PBS and then it is shipped to the oncopathologist where he or she will uh, smear the cells on the glass slide, look at the glass slide. Of course, the smearing before smearing can do H and E uh, which is a biomarker, look at the glass slide, understand the cell morphology and if the cells morphology is different then the result comes as a atypical. When the result comes as atypical then the patient is advised to go for histology where the biopsy is done and tissue is taken out from the uh, suspected region and further the biomarkers are studied. So, this is a procedure right what we are talking. We are talking that can we develop a system that you can place in a primary healthcare center where once the cells are taken you can do the smearing and the cyst you can place a slide on the system and there will be auto scanning of the cells and based on image analysis and uh, uh, you know machine learning algorithm that we will discuss in later part, uh, we can delineate uh, the cells based on the cell morphology. So, that when you have a slide the, uh, the system will scan the slide, if the cells are having a different morphology it will send those cells uh, to the remote oncopathologist. Now, why we have to do this kind of procedure, why there is a need of building such kind of system? The need is because we have very few clinicians in our country as we know right and we have even fewer oncopathologists uh, uh, to look at these slides and that is why the load on the oncopathologist is really high. At the same time uh, uh, to ship, ship the sample from the uh, remote area uh, of our country to the place where we have the facility it is a time consuming task right. And when uh, oncopathologist is looking at this slide there can be human errors there can be false positive, there can be false negative. Sometimes uh, the atypical cells are missed, pre malignant region in particular. So, you see there is malignancy is cancer, pre malignancy pre cancer, pre cancer cells they look very similar to benign. But when you use the uh, machine to look at the cells you can identify whether the cells is changing a shape even a slight of weight. So, if we understand the cell morphology then we can help the oncopathologist to come up with a better diagnosis right or to improve the uh, area which is pre malignant uh, and screen it in a proper way that is the idea right. So, uh, like I said once you take out the cells what is the procedure you have to smear the cells on the glass slide and there the problem is there because of the clumping of cells. If the cells are clumped it is difficult to understand the morphology right. We require cells to be uh, separated uniformly so that one can study individual cells. So, what is the system that can be used to study these cells? The system is called cytospin and you have seen the video in the last module. Let us discuss little bit more about cytospin before we go to the cell morphology that how the cell changes and how we can understand that point. Along with that in today's module I also want to cover uh, something on photolithography. Hmm. Very important point uh, because in photolithography uh, with the help of photolithography system we can uh, uh, fabricate lot of device. And I have already taught you photolithography in the earlier modules, but the today's idea is to understand one part of it which is spin coater unit. You see the cytospin also work on the spinning and the centrifugal force right. Spin coater also works on the same principle. So, can we develop a system that can act as a cytospin and can act as a spin coater 
right. So, let us see uh, first the importance of understanding or uh, uh, of building this hydrospin and then we will move on to the uh, polymer coating applications. Polymers are nothing but your photoresist, positive photoresist, negative photoresist, SU8, these are all polymers. P dot PSA that we have seen is a polymer. How to coat it? By using spin coater. So, we can develop a system that can work as a spin coater and can develop a, can work as a cytospin. So, if you see the slide, our today's idea is to understand a system that can work as cytocentrification and for polymer coating. So, cytology, when we talk about cytology, you have to understand that we are talking about structure of the uh, structure and functions of cell, look for abnormalities at cellular level, uh, detect pre malignant, this is extremely important and malignant tissues. Hmm. Pre malignancy is very important because with the current method the pre malignant uh, detection is extremely difficult. Conventional method is a direct smear test, direct smearing you take the slide and you put a drop of the uh, sample and you uh, put take another slide right and just smear it across the bottom slide. What will happen that you will see cells all the way like this and some cells are clamped right. So, uh, the the right the correct uh, pronunciation is clumped C L U M P D. Uh, so you can see here one such slide, right? It's so difficult because the cells are clumped because you are smearing the slide with the help of direct smear test. So we need a system that can that can help us to smear the cells in a much more uniform fashion without clumping. Right. So, direct smear test, conventional is direct smear test is widely used in developing countries such as ours and developed have shifted to uh, LBC which is liquid based cytology uh, based equipment. Right. So, now uh, uh, the develop, developed countries have been now focusing on using liquid based cytology or uh, uh, the equipment that can be used to sp uh, spin coat or uh, uh, the smear the smear the cells onto the glass slide uh, uh, using the liquid based cytology right. So, uh, why what are the uh, limitations of the direct smear that limitations like I said are heterogeneous cell localization, dirty background elements such as mucus, variable preservation, not correct representation and hence we have to go for liquid bio based cytology or LBC cool all right let us go to next slide. Next slide is LBC liquid based cytology the first is liquid based cytology instead of transferring the cells to microscopic slide directly first the cells are collected into preservative solution such as phospho buffer silane which is PBS. Now, the, the study shows that LBC allows more accurate screening of sample hmm. you can see here a clear difference between the direct smear slide and the LBC slide uh, in the microscopic view. You can see the uh, how, how uniform the uh, cells are distributed here and you see this case it is very different correct. So, now this is easier to understand each cell and study the cell morphology. Hmm. If you just see uh, in detail you will understand that each cell has a this black dot in center it is a nucleus of the cell. So, what are the advantages of LBC? LBC advantages are it is homogeneous, correct sample representation, uniformly thin layer, so no clumping, clean background and well preserved cells. These are the advantages of the LBC equipment over direct smear testing, hmm? these are the advantages. Okay. So, having this much of information let us go for the next one. So, uh, what are the equipment one such equipment is sure path using cell enrichment technology. So, the process is called thin preparation and sure path. So, in this uh, first we have to vortex in a cyto rich preservation fluid the, the brush the brush is kept in the uh, the brush which contains the cell is vortex in the cyto rich preservative fluid. Then it is disaggregated by device called syringe, it is transferred to a proprietary trap solution, it is sedimented twice 
and finally, sure path processor puts it on the glass slide. This is the procedure. Okay. If you talk about another system which is using the thin film, uh, thin prep uh, for preparing thin prep, uh, it uses filtration technique. And uh, here, the first the cells are vortex, like you can see here. Then cell collection by thin uh, prep 2000 filter. The cells are collected by this filter, hmm. and then uh, cells are transferred by computer control suitable air pressure onto the glass slide. This is another way of using the uh, <coughs> equipment for uh, LBC. So, what are the observations with the current technology? The observations are that the machinery is complex, it is a multi step procedure which is complicated, it requires a skilled person to carry out steps and it is a high cost. Okay. So, why it is important for us to develop such a system because of this particular factor. Also, we want like I said we have very few oncopathologists just can a semi skilled person, semi skilled person can operate the system that is our first question. Second question is can we make a cheaper system alright. And third question is can we make it simpler. If I can make a system that can be operated by a semi skilled person like Asha worker aggregated social health uh, uh, you know uh, workers and uh, yeah, these are semi skilled persons right compared to oncopathologist and can we use uh, social health services uh, people who are associated with that to take out the cells and load on the glass slide and uh, uh, or take out the cells and uh, smear the cells using the cytospin. So, can we develop a system that can be cheaper, can be simpler, can be operated by semi skilled person? This is the question, these are the questions uh, in front of us. So, let us see the, the proposed system or the one that we are now building and that is important. Uh, is simplest equipment that can be used in LBC performance is should be as good as thin prep and sure path inexpensive simpler to manufacture less labor intensive and molecular changing paths modular changing paths requires no training. Why we talk about modular changing paths because we want to develop, develop a system that can work as a uh, lithography system or spin coater as a spin coater or as a cytospin or end it can work as a cytospin. So, you have to change the paths if you want to use a spin coder you have to change the paths if you have to use a cytospin you have to change you have to uh, you know put another part. So, can we develop such a system hmm? that is another question. Some of the videos of how cytospin works and how uh, the spoon spin coder works uh, I will uh, uh, show you at the end of this particular uh, module. Hmm? Okay. So, if we go to the next slide we are talking about spin coder. Spin coder is a it is a standard laboratory procedure which uh, involves depositing thin films of material often polymers uniformly on flat substrates by employing the concept of centrifugal force. Uh, the applications is used majorly in the semiconductor industry. Now, when we talk about polymers you see uh, we can also deposit uh, uh, semiconductors uh, or we can also deposit some dopants. So, for example, I can uh, spin coat boron liquid boron. I can spin coat liquid phosphor, I can spin coat positive photoresist, I can spin coat negative photoresist, I can spin coat SU8, I can spin coat P dot PSS. Right? So, there are many things that we can use spin coater for and uh, that is why it is extremely important equipment in a laboratory which works on the microfabrication. The, the working is nearly 5 ml of polymer solution is dispensed on the substrate which you can see right over here right and which is then rotated typically up to required RPM uh, in order to spread by centrifugal force and this particular system is within this system here. Okay. So, the spin coater uh, consists of uh, there are different steps that we can uh, select 
uh, initially you can use a lower RPM, RPM stands for uh, rotations per minute, hmm? RPM stands for rotations per minute. Now, if I use a particular photo let us say positive photo resist, and I spin code it for 1000 RPM and I spin code for 2000 RPM. What will happen? For 1000 RPM, I will get a thick film compared to 2000 RPM. So, if your rotations per minute is higher, then your film is thinner. If your rotations per minute is less, your film would be thicker. If the time, now let us say time, time is 1 minute in one case, another case time is 2 minutes and the rotations is 1000 RPM. For 1000 RPM rotation, if I spin code for 1 minute and if I spin code for 2 minutes, the, th the, the film that is coated for 2 minutes will be thinner, the film that is coated for 1 minute would be thicker right it is obvious. So, either you if you increase the rotations per minute film will be thinner or if you decrease the time if, if you increase the time if you increase the time or increase the rotations per minute your film would be thinner. If you decrease the rotations per minute and your time is less your film would be thicker that we are comparing these two parameters all right. So, uh, I will like I said I will show it to you uh, actual procedure of how the spin coater uh, is used in the uh, in the laboratory all right so i'll go to the next slide now uh, spin coating spin, different stages in spin coating has uh, uh, first is applying solution then we have to accelerate then you have to maintain a constant speed and finally there is a solvent evaporation that's what we were talking always there is a solvent evaporation this is one way and then after this what happens after the solvent is evaporated we are doing a soft bake you remember soft bake the soft bake is after this soft bake at 90 degrees centigrade if it is a positive photo resist right for 1 minute on a hot plate. So, soft baking is done after this D cool all right let us go to the next slide. So, what are important factors when we talk about spin coater the important factors are spin speed and time acceleration rate and film thickness right. So, if you see uh, speed versus time, then you, you start the system, you dispense your uh, you know polymer and then you accelerate it to a certain uh, you know speed, maintain the speed and you have to deaccelerate so to reach your uh, end of the uh, spin coating time right. So, this is your spin coating time where you are maintaining the speed hmm? all right. So, film thickness depends on fluid viscosity. Right, uh, there is a thin photo resist, there are thick photo resist. So, that is a viscosity of the fluid, concentration of the solution, the evaporation rate of the solution, and rotational speed and time. Okay. Let us go to the next slide. So, mathematical relationship between film thickness and time. If I want to have relationship between film thickness and time, then these are the things that we have to remember. For this, uh, uh, the assumptions are. Uh, because you see uh, if you see the unsteady behavior of liquid film thickness under centrifugal force then what are the assumptions the asymmetrical flow of fluid across the wafer will happen film thickness decreases slowly with time angular velocity of fluid is equivalent to angular velocity of disc film is thin and uniform thickness over wafer right and newtonian and incompressible fluid example water material oil mineral oil etc and fluid is non volatile these are the assumptions when we are uh, when we are understanding the mathematical relation between film thickness and time and here you can see how the film thickness uh, is related to the dynamic viscosity of the uh, fluid uh, its rotational speed of the system and the time of the spinning right so, this is the uh, mathematical relation uh, if you guys are interested in. So, what are the common features when I talk about spin quarter and when I talk about cytospin. So, the common features are works on concept of centrifugal force both needs motor for rotation purpose. LCD display for controlling speed accelerating and adjusting time that are common features. What are the differences? The differences are that syringe is needed in case of spin coater for dis displacing liquid onto the substrate right. You see this one 
this one dispenser right we require dispenser that is what is saying dispenser is required. Separate molds are required for placing test tubes for placing substrate and vacuum is required for spin coater for holding different size of the substrate firmly. While in case of cytospin we do not require such a system, we do not require vacuum. Hmm? Okay. So, uh, cytos cytos centrifuge is modular mechanical components are easily detachable. Uh, this is one system that you can develop if you want to use the system as a cytospin and as a spin coater. The centrifugation chambers the cytos panels are also kept in a removable rotor head. So, the idea is that can we just place this guy on this and work as a cytospin if we remove this then it becomes a spin coater or, or vice versa. Hmm. So, we can develop our own substrate holder. Uh, combining can be done by using a centrifuge uh, compartment as separate rotor head which can be attached to a fixed spin coating system as shown below. Uh, now, if I want to if you want to make such a system what things you require you require uh, first is you need to understand what can be the improvement over the current design because there are already cytospin available in market. The cytospin cost about 3.5 lakh all the way to 15 lakhs. Now, still this is very high cost for lot of primary health centers and that is why our target is to make a low cost cytospin system. Now, for that what, what are the improvements more acceleration profiles and del for delicate samples, there is a rechargeable battery operation, touch screen in the interface, a rechargeable battery operation is very important because of the power situation within our country. There is a lot of power fluctuation and if there is no power then system should not stop in between right. So, that is another thing that we need to take care. Uh, so, if I want to select a uh, uh, you know system uh, for program what will I select over Raspberry Pi and Arduino? I will go for uh, uh, Raspberry Pi uh, which is 3 third version. If you talk about Arduino, uh, you know the OS uh, is uh, Linux based OS, here also Raspberry Pi is the same thing right. Uh, multiprocessing is possible in Pi Raspberry Pi 3 uh, where Arduino is not possible right. Uh, software apps possible in both the uh, you know our Raspberry Pi where here it is not possible in Arduino. The when you talk about frequency operation there is a quad core is a single core where the Raspberry Pi 3 is better than Raspberry Pi 1. When you talk about RAM it is 1 GB RAM or 512 megabytes RAM here is just 2 kilobytes RAM. So, this is better over the Raspberry Pi 1. Finally, if you talk about Wi Fi then also there is a Wi Fi option option in Raspberry Pi 3 where it is not there in both the Raspberry Pi 1 and Arduino. The cost when you talk about the cost is about 3500 for uh, using the Raspberry Pi 3 controller. Now, we also have to understand that which one we want to select for the uh, as a rotor for the system right. We are, we are understanding system building. So, when you talk about system building you need to understand that okay, should I use BLDC motor or DC servo or AC motor. So, when I compare the speed, torque, heat, position, control, uh, cost and efficiency I see that uh, the uh, BLDC motor can help us to uh, solve the problem. Uh, uh, same thing uh, we can we can think of using the DC servo also. Uh, so, so, you have the option of comparing and then selecting which particular system you can use it. So, please use this slide as a reference and you can uh, read the papers. So, you know more about what is the importance of the cytospin in case of the uh, cytology based screening all right. Now, this is the end of this particular module and uh, that is why I want to show it to you two videos which you will see at the uh, as a part of uh, understanding the cytospin and spin coater in detail. So, I will just uh, show you two videos where you will see how the spin coating is done uh, and how we can use cytospin in reality. So, we can put a sample and we see how the, uh, uh, the cells are smeared on the glass slides. All right. So, uh, I will I will complete my uh, uh, module now and let us see the videos and then we will uh, continue the next module next time right. In the next module I want to show it to you how the normal cells and the cancer cells can be delineated uh, uh, based on the uh, different factors like dividing of cells, variation in shape and size, normal features, uh, it is a variably shaped nuclei and so on and so forth. Okay, we will we'll see this thing in the next uh, module. So, let us run the uh, videos. Our automatic universal dispenser is available as a fixed center mounted unit or in the off center adjustable UD3B mount. The UD3B is used as an additional coating dispense unit or for automated edge B removal. 
an edge bead is a layer of thicker material that builds up at the edge of a substrate during a coating process. It can interfere with further processing steps and is best removed as part of the coating program. It is most important to begin with a correctly centered substrate. Here we used a Laurel Technologies alignment tool to guarantee consistent accurate centering. Consistent centering allows you to set up the UD3B to accurately remove just the edge bead without having to reset for each substrate or remove more of your coating than is absolutely necessary. The UD3B we are using has the solvent fed by an air operated syringe. There are options available that allow solvent to be fed from a pressure vessel or from a bottle through a bottle pump. A fine needle is used and in combination with a low syringe dispense pressure this creates a consistent stream of solvent that can be accurately directed at the edge of the substrate. The tip of the needle should be 1 to 2 millimeters from the surface of the substrate and should be angled so that the stream of solvent flows in the direction of rotation. Laurel Systems normal direction of rotation is counterclockwise. Here we show an example of a coating program with automatic edge bead removal. The center universal dispenser delivers the coating material and the substrate is accelerated to the final speed needed to achieve the required film thickness and dry the substrate. The substrate is slowed to around 1000 RPM and the solvent is dispensed for 3 seconds, removing the edge bead. The substrate is then accelerated to 3000 RPM to dry the edge. We recommend you clean the UD3B at the end of every day. If all that has been used is solvent for edge bead removal, then drying the wetted path with clean dry air or nitrogen should be all that is necessary.
yeah so now you have seen the video right so uh, you can you can see um, how the cytospin and how the spin coater uh, works as an individual unit and how you can design a system that can integrate both the stuff right so this is the end of this module i'll see you in the next module till then you take care